Oh, okay, better strap in because this might be a long one. I even my phone battery's low, so just might I'll just go till. I'm gonna start out with the letter I got from my good buddy Gary in the great state of Pennsylvania. Artie, what's happening? Finally got got done. I finally sat down. <laughs> they have clear the afternoon and watch the ice pirates it was so great my re review was kind of eh I found it hard to review actually it was such a crazy movie it won't hurt my feelings if you don't like it ho ha this week was freakishly hot how do you guys um, do it in the Texas heat I just found a mighty man and monster maker on Facebook mar marketplace for five dollars in Perfect condition. I had one when I was a kid and totally forgot it existed. I loved it. It came out in 1978. What WTF? So this is the first monster I made on it. Savor it. I'll show you. He sent it to me. I miss reading. I want to read some more Conan, Usagi, Tokyo Ghoul, and Chainsaw Man. I really think that you would uh, you would dig those, especially Tokyo Ghoul. All right, take it easy, man. Gary. Thanks, Gary. He's nice stationary, too. And here's... He made a monster. It's awesome. It reminds me of one of those creatures from Flash Gordon. <coughs> I want a Mighty Man picture, Gary. So next, I'm going to show... I went to the thrift store this morning. This morning, and... It's a thrift store that, um... I haven't been to in a while. So I went this morning and uh, I was on, like, maybe they'll have something, something, one thing. Let me find one thing. So this is what I found. The Mammoth Hunters by Gene M. Owl. Owl. I remember seeing Clan of the Cave Bear. I, I kind of thought these books were hard to come by. So, and this is like the third in the series, I think. So, I found Star Wars: Heir to the Empire. Uh, it says this is the first book written after the movies, and like a sequel to Return of the Jedi. See, I think found some VHS tapes. Found a pretty good, nice anaconda. I haven't seen this in a while. I, I see reviews of how like, how it's aged very well and how good it is. So we'll see. I found Kung Fu: The Punch of Death, Meng Fei. I thought it was, this is like an instruction video, but no, it's a movie. And then, I just bought this. It's a, it's FR period Frank's first mass. Is that Friar Frank's first mass? June 5th, 5th, 1994. Maybe some porn on there. And then Maximum Exposure. Ripley. Oh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. And When Animals Attack. But then it says King Kong and Tomb Raider. So we'll see what's on these. Maybe it's like some home. We'll, we'll see what we'll see what's on it. And then the the cup to grace of um but I found like I saw a review of it by the cinema snob and I was like, man, I haven't seen that movie in so long. And he it's he, he gave it a backhanded good review. But I was like, man, okay. I checked to see if the library had it. It didn't. I looked for Arctic prices on online. I was like, oh, I'm not paying that. But I went to the thrift store and I found Rhinestone. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I remember seeing it on cable. I mean, at the time, I loved Stallone. Love Dolly. It's got Tim Thomerson in it. Uh, also, Richard Farnsworth is in it. So, um, let me know if anyone wants me to review it. Uh, I'll do it. Mindstone. And the soundtrack is, like, outrageously priced. It's like $300 for the CD, but like $50 for the LP. It should be like reversed. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I was just, I saw it and I was oh like, how? Like, I wish I would have wished for, I don't know, what else on VHS, like a Fulci or a, like if, if, I, if I, if I could think about what VHS I would have wished, wished to like wanted or on any format, and then find it like this. Uh, I can't think of anything other than Cannibal Holocaust, whatever which I already have on Blu-ray. I don't know. I can't think of maybe like a oh uh, maybe like uh, Lamora. A child's Tale of the Supernatural, that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna get to my review. I'm gonna re review Vampire Beat, which takes us back to the beginning, to my friend Gary, he sent this to me. And look at that cover. Soak that in. It's a cop, but he's got fangs and a Dracula cape. So I'll read the back. The streets of Miami are hot, hot with sleaze and sin. And nobody knows those streets better than homicide detective Christopher Blaze. Or so he thought. As an undercover cop, it was his job to bust the creatures of the night, not become one of them. But sometimes even the best cops tur turned and no one... Sometimes even the best cops turned and no one suspected. Not their captains, not their girlfriends, not even their partners. Now Chris Blaze is working the graveyard shift, hunting a centuries-old serial killer, leaving behind a trail of beauty, beautiful young victims. For another vampire is stalking the hot Miami nights, and this time Blaze has nothing to lose but his immortal soul. Drink to that. So I had no idea how this was going to be. I started it, and it's great. Um, I'm going to flip the tape. Still on that Neanderthal noise machine tip. Um, this book is just nonstop action. Funny, like Vincent Courtney, if that's his real name. He's just he can he's funny. He keeps it going. He, uh, what he does that I really liked, besides being like nasty, gross, and gory and and jokey like almost like almost every character that you encounter in the book gets a little backstory and character like um there's a one of the vampire's victims n not uh chris blaze but like the vampire is fighting it's like a hooker and she's just she's trying to get to another spot where business is better and she walks through an alley and you just she's just thinking about her life and how like her mother left her father because she realized she was a lesbian and then after that her father went nuts and imposed all these like crazy rules on her and, and, and they were she's Mexican and her dad is Mexican and then he got a white girlfriend who like laughed at him one night during sex so he strangled her and cut her vagina off and was like running through the streets like holding and waving it saying all women were whores or and then the police blew him, he like the police came and he attacked him and he they blew him away and i was like that's great so every not every everyone doesn't get like a crazy backstory like that but they get something a little little tidbit of something um 
Christopher Blaze. Now that I think about it, he's like the least interesting, but he's, he gets turned into he gets turned into a vamp into a vampire by being cursed by like some cult leader. He doesn't get bit. <coughs> So he has to like take the night shift and he gets paired up with a black detective, Reggie Carver, who's a great character. And while I was reading in my head, like I pictured, I pictured Eddie Murphy. I pictured Eddie Murphy as Reggie Carver. I pictured uh, Chris Evans as the vampire, like Christopher Blaze. I pictured, um, his girlfriend has a uh, oh my god what I from the girl from Reanimator I can't remember her name right now and the uh, villain vampire is Christopher Walken <laughs> and it's just yeah it turns into a uh, like Christopher has to fight like because there just just happens to be another vampire in, in Miami who who would have thunk it. But yeah, it's just non-stop act. And then, this is also like, if they made it into a movie, it could only be made, like, within the last uh, 20, 20 years with CGI. Because there's, like, there's so, so much crazy stuff that happens. Like, he uh, can shapeshift, fly, turn into a wolf or a bat. And there's a part where, like, he's he's flying through the, through the city at night looking for the, the evil vampire. And then, like, a horde of bats chasing him and I was like you can only do that now so and then it's like I said it's sleazy there's like graphic depictions of sex uh, violence and gore and, and it's just it's funny it was great I, it took it took me about a week to read it but only because like it's so hot here in Texas and it's been so busy at my work and when I get home I've just been falling asleep. I don't know. What, let me know what it's like where, where you work and live. Do you do, you do that? Because I'm just spent after a day at work. I, I just want to relax, but I just fall asleep. But uh, it's 300 and... It's 302 pages. I, I think I could have finished it in like two days. Like, if I had been so tired. Um, what else? I don't... I, and this Vincent Courtney, he's, like, written one or two other books. I would read them. And if you see this, like, grab it. I don't know. If you're just into that kind of stuff, I would give it a... Jesus. I would give it a four out of five. It's not great. It's not, like serious at any time or but yeah uh, this guy was just I was and I was as I was reading it I was comparing it to Layman and I was like he doesn't have that just that singular narrative like just I don't know how to describe how Layman does it but close very close just like signature style but it was it was really good I Great time reading it. And uh, I guess we're going to end it now, but yeah, Vampire Beat, uh, it was a blast.